to flow in one direction and keep it from flowing. And it spins around very fast and it generates pressure. This is the pressure tank and its role is essentially and this larger spring is set at about 44 45 PSI. it's closed and you're going to see the pump will turn on hey there guys it is a hot muggy pre-monsoon day here in southern arizona and i've got my sunday best on and i am about to start on my pump house project um but uh with all the nice cloud cover it's pretty good lighting and i have received so many questions over the years about you guys asking how my pump house works like the pump and pressure tank setup so that's what i'm going to do in this video just show you how that all works while there's no structure around it and uh, it'll be very easy to see everything and hopefully you'll find it interesting and then uh, maybe at the end I'll talk about you know kind of what my plans are for the pump house okay so the basic flow of the water through this system begins at my tanks that you saw earlier and it comes through this inlet pipe right here this is an inch and a quarter inlet pipe and then it flows through a check valve. And after it goes through a check valve, it goes into my pump. The pump adds pressure. And then it goes through this pipe into here and it is back pressured with my pressure tank, which allows my pump to not have to kick on that often. And I'll explain that a little bit later. And then that pressurizes my house right there, it goes into the ground and over to my house. And now I will talk about each one of these uh, in a little more specific detail. Now for a little more detail, starting with this check valve. If you are unfamiliar with the check valve, essentially all it is there for is to allow water to flow in one direction and keep it from flowing in the opposite direction. So there is a little baffle in here that is spring loaded. And as water comes in, that baffle freely moves this way and there's space all the way around this little uh, angled chamber to where water can flow around that little uh, baffle and into the pump and onto the house. But that spring, if the water starts flowing this way, it seals up so the water can't flow back down into the tanks and it keeps the pump wet and uh, basically all of the pressure is maintained with this check valve. Some pumps will have an integral check valve, um, but this one does not. And even if this one did have, I would still just add a check valve just as a little safety mechanism to make sure that in case the check valve of the pump failed, then I would still maintain pressure in the house. Now, after the water passes through this check valve, it then enters the pump through the pump inlet, which is right here. And once it gets in this chamber right here, there is something called an impeller and it spins around very fast and it generates pressure. And then that pressure is directed to this outlet where it goes on to the pressure tank. Now the pressure uh, is set with a spring pressure gauge. This is a shallow well jet pump. I'll show you some different views of how it looks. Um, but basically there's some springs inside this that you adjust until you get a pressure reading that you want for your house. I tend to keep mine very low because I think it uh, helps increase the longevity of the pump. Um, but that is essentially all it is. And again, the reason for that check valve is as this pressure is created, you don't want the pressure going this direction. You want it to be directed to the pressure tank and onto the house. Now that the cover's off, you can better see the spring adjustments that will ultimately turn the pump on and off. This smaller spring is adjusted at the low pressure setting. I believe I've got it like maybe 32 PSI or something like that. And this larger spring is set at about 44, 45 PSI. So as this pump pumps and flows water to my house, um, once it gets to that 32 PSI, this smaller spring is adjusted with a nut to allow power to kick on so that the pump runs and that pump will run until it gets to the 45 PSI, um, whereas this spring will turn the power off and this is all done 
uh, with these little uh, pieces up here and I'll give you a better look at that now. And here's a little better look of how the power is actually turned on by way of these little spring mechanisms. You can see those little copper contacts and I'm just going to use my remote and push these closed and you're going to see the pump will turn on. Simple as that. And the last component in this system before it goes to the house is this big blue guy. This is the pressure tank. And its role is essentially to maintain pressure to the house, but also it has the very important role of making your pump last a long time. Because you could technically run this whole system just off the pump, no pressure tank. But what that would mean is that every time you turned on a faucet in the house, uh, that pressure would drop very quickly, the pump would kick on. So say if you use the uh, faucet 50 or 100 times throughout the day, that pump is kicking on 50 or 100 times. But the pressure tank, what that does is it holds a reserve of water with a pressurized rubber bladder in the top of it. Uh, you can adjust that pressure too. Um, but that will allow say 30 or 40 gallons of water to be able to be used inside the house through faucets or showers or whatever without the pump having to kick on until it reaches that low pressure setting. Uh, so instead of it kicking on 50 or 100 times, this pump might only kick on two, three, four times a day. So that will en enable your pump to last for, you know, 10, 15 years or more. And for a little demonstration, I'm gonna start running the hose so you can see where the pressure is now. And as it drops, it's going to hit uh, maybe a little bit over 30 PSI. And then based on my adjustments on these springs, it will kick the pump on and it'll run until it repressurizes to where I have it set now. And I'm gonna flow it for just a little bit and then throw it in the tanks so that I'm not losing any water. So now you should have a basic understanding of how a simple pump house setup will operate with a check valve pump and pressure tank. And you may be wondering about some of the other things I got going on here, namely these two guys right here. Well, those are there because I plan to incorporate, uh, once I have the pump house built, a water filtration system. So once I have that system installed, I can uh, add in a threaded uh, uh, fitting there and a threaded fitting there. The flow can run up through the filtration system back down and in here and I will use this quarter turn valve to cut that off so that all the water is filtered water going through there and if I ever need to do maintenance I can simply uh, take the system off open this one out close them out like this and it can run as is the next thing you may be wondering about is this little side guy because this pipe comes from the tanks well, this right here, um, I just have this just to keep dirt out. Uh, but this is so that I can have an auxiliary way if I shut down um, at my tanks, the inlet that I can just set up a temporary IBC tote or a temporary tank because eventually I do want to uh, change my tanks out for like a larger concrete or metal cistern. Uh, I've been saying that for years, but you know, it's a financial thing. But that way I can simply hook in an auxiliary inlet run off of a small tank water until I can remove these, put something else in its place. And that is what that is for. And then you also may be wondering about this little uh, power cord. Well, if you look at the footprint of this slab, uh, I had originally had a smaller pump house here and the power was there and it was just too deep. Uh, so I just decided to leave it there. I figure uh, once I get the pump house set up, I will rerun this electrical to the wall. I'll give it uh, the pump house a little uh, light and a, a switch 
and then I'll have an outlet over here that will also be able to power the water filtration system, the UV light portion of it, um, once I have all that in place. So that's why I just have this run just temporarily uh, like this. One last thing I almost forgot to cover that you might be wondering about. What are these unusual looking PVC fittings here, here, and here? Well, these are PVC union fittings and they allow you to make connections that can be undone by way of a coupler ring. Uh, so here's an older one I have. It has this coupler ring that threads on and on the inside there is a piece that has a rubber seal and that seals against a flat piece here and it allows you to do things like if this pump ever goes bad i have a spare in my garage and i can undo this fitting undo this fitting i'll have to unthread the uh, this assembly from the inlet and the outlet but then i can put a new pump there everything else stays in place and then simply reconnect these union fittings and i also have one here so when i build this pump house i can shut down the system undo these two take this pipe out build my wall drill a hole and reassemble it and you may be wondering why i don't have one on the uh, pressure tank side well the reason for that was just more of a cost reason i have a little more flexibility with where i put that uh, so if i ever need to switch that out i'll just get a cheap little uh, slip coupler and do it the old-fashioned way but for this i wanted it to be interchangeable so I could simply replace a pump and it, it might take me 20, 30 minutes and I'm good to go. Well, I think that's gonna conclude this tour of my rainwater harvesting system pump house without the house, of course. Um, and I hope it was interesting to those of you who have always uh, wondered, I guess, with more uh, specifics on how the rainwater in my tanks gets pressurized and sent to my house. And, uh, you know, you can see it is a very simple setup and it's pretty much the same setup that municipal systems have, although theirs are just way bigger and they have a lot more pump stations, um, with one exception, uh, like in the Midwest and places where they have water towers to gain the elevation or head pressure, uh, you know, from having the water sitting higher or in systems where they uh, gain water from a reservoir that might be up in the mountains and they can uh, take advantage of the drop uh, of water dropping and uh, gaining pressure for a system like that. Uh, but pretty much every system is always gonna have a pump too. And uh, as for my plans for this pump house, it's gonna be a rectangle, or a, not a rectangle, a square. And I'm probably going to sheet it in uh, something that kind of matches my shop. Um, I don't know if you remember the horse barn. I used the, the old park and shade roofing that I got uh, for a very good price. I have a few pieces of that left. They're 18 feet long. So, uh, and it kind of has a similar look to that. So I think that's what I'm going to use for the side. As for the roof, I might be trying to match just a standard shed roof of my shop, but I still am a little bit open. Uh, when I showed you guys the video where a lot of people mentioned my Wi-Fi base looked like a uh, cupola, uh, kind of got me to thinking, well, maybe I ought to do a pitched roof and something like that for extra ventilation and cooling of the pump house. But I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I may also do like a, uh, I hate to say green roof because uh, everything's just so green, green, every, uh, everything these days, uh, but some sort of a natural roof or something uh, that is kind of also something that I was thinking of where it would hold like, you know, some soil or something and, you know, provide a little thermal stability. But then again, most likely I'm probably just going to add metal and, uh, you know, just, just have it be a nice little pump house. Maybe I'll have a solar fan or something like that uh, to keep it ventilated. Um, Anyway, so I think uh, the next one you see of this, you're going to see me building uh, stuff or building the pump house. And uh, I, uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like so, this. As always, uh, I will see you on the next one.